Okay. Um, let us now move on to the next topic that is networking. To work with socket programming or network programming rather, we need to use java.net package. In this net package, we have several classes. Like, first of all, let us understand when you want to talk to some program on another machine, you need to specify the address of that machine. So, we have a inet address class using which we can specify the address of the machine. If you want to communicate across an intra internet rather than within your intranet, then we need to specify a URL. So, when you specify a URL, a connection is open between your machine and the specified URL. So, in that case, the connection is being maintained by the URL connection class. If you want to work with or write a client server program, then there are two protocols that are supported by the networking package that is the UDP and the TCP IP. UDP stands for user datagram protocol, TCP IP for transmission control protocol, internet protocol. Now, what is the difference between UDP and TCP IP? UDP is connectionless, whereas TCP IP is connection oriented. UDP the packets are limited to 64 KB, whereas TCP IP there is no limit. UDP there is no guarantee because there is no acknowledgement, whereas TCP IP you do get an acknowledgement, therefore there is a guarantee to the package delivery. So, even if an error occurs, it gets resent back the entire package. So, therefore, UDP is a timely or rather a time a very quick protocol, whereas TCP IP is much slower than UDP. So, any message you want to send it because of its time factor, within the time if it is not sent, the data changes because the data does not make sense if it takes too long to get passed across, then you can go in for UDP as I said for a timed factor, whereas TCP IP is the much guaranteed one which we most often use. So, in order to work with UDP protocol, we work with the datagram socket and datagram packet classes. And TCP IP, we use the server, socket and the socket classes. Now, these are just few of the classes in the net package, of course, there are many more. Now, let us look at more into inet address class. The inet address class has method like get localhost, which returns, it is a static method of the class, which returns the inet address object for the local machine. So, if you are going to talk to, have a client and server program in the same machine, you can call for get localhost method, get the address of your uh, local machine and talk to the client and the program, between the client and the program method. The get localhost as it is returning a inet address object, the inet address object consists of both the IP address and the name of the machine. Get by name is another method which takes string as a parameter, that is you give the name of the machine, it will return a inet address object for that machine. 
get address and get host name are instance methods that is that you call the methods on the object of adnet address the get host name returns the name of the machine whereas get uh, get address returns a byte array consisting of four elements that's because it returns a ip address of the machine and ip address uh, consists of four parts now in case of a url class URL class has a method called open connection. So, you can create a URL object and call for open connection, it will return a URL connection object. You can read from the specified URL what the content of that URL is going to return to you by calling for open stream, which returns a input stream object or you can use get content. Open stream, returning the input stream object, you use the stream object to read either line by line, character by character, whatever. Get content returns an object, the entire content that the URL is going to return back to you. Provided that what the get content does is first, it checks whether the MIME type is supported or the content type is supported at your end. If the content type is not supported, it tries to load that content type. If it is not possible to load the content type, it will just return it as a generic content to you. So, that is a difference between uh, using open stream and get content. Again, with open stream, you can read character by character, line by line, whereas get content returns the entire thing as an object to you. URL connection also lets you read the content of the URL, but it also tells you the details about the connection like what is the expiration date, when did, what is the uh, name of the machine to which you have connected, what time you connected, all this information plus the content. So, in order to read the content from URL connection, the two methods are again get content and get input stream. Apart from this, you also have get output stream. So, you can actually write to this URL through this get output stream as well. N now, again the same difference that we came across between open stream and get content is the difference between get input stream and get content as well. Now, what is the difference between using open stream and get content of URL class versus the get input stream and get content of the URL connection class? There is no difference because the open stream method calls in return URL connections get input stream and get content of URL will call the get content of URL connection. Now, let us take a look at a UDP and a TCP IP program. We said UDP is connection less whereas TCP IP is connection oriented. So, let us assume that we will have a client program and a server program for UDP where the client sends a message to the server and the server will pick up that message and display. Now, what we need to do for this is, now UDP works with a byte data type, TCP IP you can work with any data type. So, in the client, since we are going to send the message, you need to create a datagram socket object. You need to create a datagram packet object. Now, the packet object that you need to create is to send a message. So, therefore, what you need to do is, you need to have a byte array because remember you are going to spend, uh, send data as bytes here. So, you need to have a byte array. So, specify the byte array that needs to be sent across, the length that you are going to send across 
the amount of information that you are going to send across. The INET address object and the port number. This port is the port number at which the server would be listening in. Once you have a datagram packet object and you have created a datagram socket, now take the datagram socket object, call the send method on the socket passing the packet object as parameter. The server needs to receive the information. So, it creates a datagram socket object specifying the port number at which it would be listening in. And it also has a byte array to receive the information into. And you need to create a datagram packet object to receive the information. So, here you need to specify a byte array and the length that you want to receive. Now, using the datagram socket object, call the receive method on the packet object. Now, once you call a receive, this is a blocking call. Till it receives some information, it keeps hanging at this call. And once it re receives the information, then it comes out of this call. Now, you can extract the information. To extract the information, you call for dp dot get data. Get data is to extract the information that you have received from the packet. Now, this is going to return your byte array. Now, if you were to directly display this byte array, you will not understand the information. What you need to do is pass this to a string object thereby converting the array byte array to a string object and then display it. So, this is your UDP program. Now, let us look at the same thing with TCP IP. So, let us look at the same example with TCP IP. In TCP IP, a client again wants to send a message to the server. and the server would display that message. So, in this case, the client needs to create a socket object specifying the machine name followed by the port number at which the server would be listening. This machine name is nothing but the machine to which it needs to send the message. Using this socket object, then it does a get output stream because remember it needs to write the content to the server. So, it needs to write to the output stream. Now, using the output stream, then we write the message. In case of a server, it needs to create a server socket object. specifying the port number on which this server is going to listen on. Now, using this server socket object, then it calls the accept method. Remember, TCP IP is a connection oriented protocol. So, therefore, this accept method is a blocking call waiting for a client to connect. When does a client connect? When he creates a socket object specifying the machine and the port number, that is when this accept comes out of its call. This is where the handshake happens. S being a uh, connection oriented, there should be a handshake before sending a message. So, that is done with the accept method. This is where the connection gets established between a client and a server. When a client creates a socket object specifying the machine name port number, accept comes out of its call. When it comes out of its call, it returns a socket object. for that particular client. Now, let us say you are connecting to an internet. You specify a URL to Yahoo, let us assume. So, when you specify the URL, for you as a client at the Yahoo server, a socket is created. At the server side, you need not be aware of that. 
you are connecting to Yahoo server through some free port on your machine. Some free port will be associated with your connection for the server side. But you will always contact to one particular listener port. For example, HTTP listens only on port 80. So you are actually connecting to port 80 when you specify the URL. There, you will talk to port 80. Any message that you want to send is sent to port 80. But finally, there would be a socket returned for you using which the server communicates back with you, which you need not be aware of. So that's exactly what's happening out here. Once the accept returns, that is, it returns from its call, it returns a socket for you as a client. Now, using this socket object, you call for get input stream because you want to read what the client has sent. Now, using this input stream, then you call the read to read the contents of the stream or the socket. Now, what is a socket? Socket is nothing but an endpoint of communication port. So, there are totally 65,535 ports, one set for TCP IP, one set for UDP, out of which up till 1024 it is reserved for various purpose like 21 for FTP, 23 for Telnet, 80 for HTTP, so on and so forth. Each port has been reserved for a specific purpose. So when you are writing your program, you need to write a port number which is beyond 1024, which are all free ports. Now let us take a look at an example in networking that is using UDP and TCP IP. How we would run the same program that we have spoken about? 